five. And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Broadway columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'd like to introduce another panel member who will be wearing shoes tonight for the first time in several weeks because Gino Prato just brought them back from Italy, Mr. Fred Allen. Thank you very much. May I present a young lady who has recently invented a new television quiz show. It's bigger than the $64,000 question. It's bigger than the big surprise. The winner on her new uh, TV quiz is going to get one share of Ford stock. And here she is, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman whose name has been romantically linked uh, with that of his wife, the lovely Phyllis, Mr. Bennett Cerf. We are taller when we stand up, aren't we? <laughs> I have the pleasure of introducing our panel moderator, the famous news analyst and general obfuscator, Mr. John <laughs> Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. As you see, we open things differently tonight because we had a lot of letters from a lot of nice people saying we always wondered what the girls wore, and this was to let them have a chance to see what the girls wore. Once again tonight, we're up to the usual tricks. However, we have some nice people here with some interesting occupations, and we trust that the occupations will give my friends on the panel some trouble. We'll also have a famous guest challenger a bit later on. But, panel, are you all ready? Yes, Mr. Daly. Yes, uh, well, I thank speak you. for everybody. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Allen. I think then it's time for them to meet the first challenger whose line has to be spotted. Will you sign in, please, sir? Tor. Tor. Right, sir? Uh, I just wanted to... Uh, Mr. Torres, I just wanted to get a good look at your handwriting and tell the panel it's firm and bold. And actually, to save a little time, I'll ask you to come on over and sit down with me, if you will. Thank you, Mr. Uh, right here, sir. And uh, one first question. Where are you from? Uh, from Washington, D.C. Oh, you live down in Washington. Yes, good. And are you familiar with our scoring operations? How well, we score this, sir? Uh, yes, little job here? Partly, anyhow. I'm All coming. right. All those things having been taken care of, then let's let the people at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Panel, I will tell you that Mr. Tors is salaried, and with that, let's begin the general questioning with Arlene uh, Francis. Uh, Mr. Tor, it isn't Mr. Tor Tor, it's Mr. Tor. Tor Tors. It's Mr. Tor Tor. Mr. Tor Tors. <laughs> right, sir? Walla Walla. Yes. Mr. Tor Tor. <laughs> Feels though I'm talking baby talk. Uh, do you deal in services, Mr. Tor Tor? Yes, I guess so. Uh, is there any product connected with what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Tors, you say you, you come from Washington. Does that mean that what you do is done principally in Washington? Yes, that's right. Would it have anything whatever to do with governmental work? Yes, it does. Uh, you are then in the salary of some government, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Is it a government other than that of the United States? Yes, I think you're pretty near it. Uh, would it be the government of one of the Scandinavian countries? Well, uh, anyhow, very close to Scandinavian Danish country. Danish. Oh, did them that well. I included Denmark with the... Uh, oh, fine. Well, all right. The point has been made anyway, Betty. Yeah. You go is ahead. It, is it Denmark? No. Is it Denmark? No. That's fine. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. I wish I were better at geography. Uh, it is a cold country, though. Well, sometimes. <laughs> are, are the nights very long? Yes, they can be Quite long. Well, is it uh, someplace like Iceland? Uh, Greenland? 
You Iceland? Want, well, is one? it Iceland? Is it Iceland? Is that your question? Is it I Iceland? I guess it better be, because that's really what I was thinking of, yes. That's your question? Yes. What is it? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what is Iceland it? is the country. Now, what do Miss Tors have to do with Iceland, though? Um, well, are you the member, are you a member of an embassy? Yes. Are you the ambassador from Iceland? Yes. <laughs> Uh, with Mr. Torr's permission, I will tell you the little trap we thought we'd set for you. Mr. Torr's is also the ambassador to the United Nations for Iceland, and we hope that the uh, combination of having Mr. Torr's here in New York and the UN here in New York would get you to the UN, and then we'd admit he was ambassador to the UN and say, but that's not what he does, you see. But you, <laughs> well, you fooled he, us. Uh, can he stay in Iceland with his name, the Thor Thor name? <laughs> <laughs> Danger, the oh, actually, that'd be kind of interesting. So, where, where does the name Tors uh, derive? Tors, you know, uh, Tor was the old uh, northern god of thunder yes, and warfare. Right. Are you a thunderous and uh, no? I'm a very, name? very peaceful man. Very peaceful <laughs> man. Even if you have it twice in yes. your name. Well, Mr. Ambassador, it was very nice of you to honor us with your presence, and I think that my friends on the panel would uh, very John, much appreciate an opportunity. John, before Mr. Tors leaves, I wish he'd do me one great favor and tell me how he pronounces the capital of Iceland. Reykjavik. Reykjavik? Yes, you said it quite well. Reykjavik. 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 Yes. You planning on going there for a lecture, Bennett? <laughs> yes, <laughs> all you have to do is ask me. <laughs> Well, you might get one. Mr. Torres, thank you very much for being our well, guest. And would you say hello to the family? Thank you very much. I'm sorry it was so easy. <laughs> it's all my <laughs> turn. It's nice to have you here. <laughs> all righty, panel. I must give you um, A for effort and also A for achievement. But let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? <laughs> Are we going to have conferences on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Betsy? Betsy Sherman, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Missy? Miss. It's Miss. Where are you from, Miss Sherman? Los Angeles, California. Oh, that's a long way away, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's nice for you to have come this far to see us, but I hope you won't mind a small additional journey. Would you walk down in front of the panel so they can see you, please? Hello. Hello. All right, over here, if you will, Miss Sherman, and sit right down next to me. And I would ask you, first of all, if you are familiar with our scoring system. Yes, I am. Well, you know, I sat down here, and here was this lovely big red apple. I don't know who it's for, <laughs> but you can have it. <laughs> Thank you. Teacher. Well, if you know how we score this thing, let's let the folks at home, those here in the theater with us, know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, Miss Sherman is salaried also, and let's begin the general questioning with Fred Allen. Do you, uh, uh, Miss Sherman, do you work in Los Angeles? Yes, I do. You do. Do you, uh, uh, are you, do you deal in services? Yes. Are your services available for women and for men? Yes. Uh, do you have an office? Yes. Do you... <laughs> <laughs> are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, who's watching the office while you're here? <laughs> are you, uh, uh... Uh, do you wear something other than what you wear now when you were... <laughs> Not that I don't approve of what you have on now. I mean. <laughs> but do you wear a uniform of any sort? I usually wear a dress, but I think this is a little bit more elaborate than usual. More elaborate. Yes. You're not uh, in any form of show business, are you? No. You're not. Yes, Miss Sherman is not. Is no. not. I'm still alive then. <laughs> yeah, you're still alive. <laughs> That's news to me, John. I thought. Oh, uh, I, I figured it. Do you? Uh, do people come to you for your uh, to do for you to d dispense your services? Yes. They do come to you by appointment. Sometimes. I mean, they can. <laughs> can they just walk in at the whim uh, if they're passing by on the whim? Um, no. Do you touch them uh, in any uh, way? Uh, uh, oh, uh, 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 please. Oh, I did. You were carried away there for a minute. Yes, I was. I was going downhill <laughs> verbally. <Please>. Actually, <laughs> I actually, couldn't the stop question myself. was, can they just walk 
drop by. Uh, yes, uh, when the wind. When they walk, when the wind. This requires a conference. <coughs> Mr. Allen, we, in the interest of fairness, would like to revise the reply to the next preceding question. Uh, I, I passed, John. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> All right, well, we won't score against you because the answer, actually, somebody could drop in if they so will. So we'll give you an affirmative reply on that. And you pass, do you? Uh, yes, I pass. All right. I want to sit on my laurels. They're very soft and... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis? Uh, can a man and woman come to see you together? Yes. Are they ever brought by anybody? Carried in, you mean? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes. Do you have anything at all to do with the law? I don't mean avoiding it. <laughs> you mean as a somebody who is Somebody connected. who is a law-abiding citizen uh, might uh, use uh, Miss Sherman's services if something wrong, something had gone amiss. Well, yeah. Why don't I clarify that, shall I? Before well, you do. Well, uh, <laughs> no, I tell you, to be quite honest, in the terms which you just set down, a law-abiding citizen might, because something was amiss, but not necessarily criminal or fundamentally illegal, yes. but something being amiss, they might come, yes. I believe, to Thank Sherman. Hmm? What I really w meant uh, is... <laughs> Does Miss Sherman have anything to do with detecting in any way? Mm, no, I wouldn't think so, no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Too Miss, bad. Miss Sherman, when people come to you, do you dispense some kind of advice to them? Do you sometimes tell them a course of action they can pursue to their advantage? <laughs> sometimes. Would this, would this service that you perform be in any way connected with marriage? No. No. <laughs> That's two down and eight to go, Miss Gilgallon. Uh, do you make people happier, Miss Sherman? <laughs> Sometimes. Well, is it possible that you that someone could avail himself of your service and not be happier? Well, I would say that there are instances when people who might be the recipient of um, Miss. German services might not be happy, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you have said that men and women could visit you together. Could they also come to you separately? Yes. Uh, do you work in your office in the daytime more than at night? Yes. Do people require you to do something in connection with paper? Yes. <clears throat> do you have anything to do with banking or income tax? No. No, I wouldn't think so. Three down and seven to go, and I'm going to give you one more minute, panel, because you were, uh, I think, lost on this. Do you have anything to do with the motion picture studios out there? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis? Would children be able to use your services? No. Five <laughs> down and five to go, Mr. Sir? I, you don't work in a barber shop, do you? No. <laughs> six <laughs> down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen? Is there any product involved in what you do? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. You work for a profit-making organization. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Is it your own business? Do you control your own business? You work for somebody? Well, then which would you like to ask? Is it your own business? Is it your own business? It's none of my business. I mean... <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm salaried. Which we announced earlier, so that would flip the card to another no. And one more try, Miss Francis. Would insurance of any kind have to do with your work? Ah, uh, gee, no. no. No, we'll flip all of them, and this is going to surprise you. I might say I wouldn't mind paying mine under these circumstances, because Miss Sherman is a bill collector. Oh. <laughs> Do people go to bill collectors? I thought bill collectors oh, yes, always went to people. yes, to go and get the bill collector to go and collect the bill. Oh, of course. I never thought of that. Somebody's got to bring the bill to the bill oh. to get the bill collected. And also, Ms. Sherman explained to me, very often they call up on the phone, and the people who owe the 
little stipend, come in very nicely and pay it in, you know, which is awfully good of them, I think, don't you? Where is it with the, what, what outfit are you with? National Credit Exchange in Los Angeles. The National Credit Exchange. <laughs> so if you must owe money and need it collected, call Miss Sherman. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Miss Sherman. You. And nice to have you with us. And that's my On the now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are all uh, masked. And the masks are all in place, are they, panel? Yes, yes sir. Mr. Dan. Wow, we. All right, will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. Well, that immediate recognition by the audience almost always means somebody in show business. Uh, am I on the right track when I ask you, are you a show business character? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a yes answer. That's Jill Gallon next. Are you a comedian? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen? Are you employed in uh, New York at the moment? Ah. <laughs> Miss Francis? In what? television? Is that yes or no? Yes, that was a yes. Oh. Are you employed in television? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 That's a yes, too, Mr. Sir. I think it's somebody I've been waiting for a long time. Have you got a show of your own, sir? Ah. Uh -huh. Miss Gilgallan? Was that a yes? Yeah, that was a yes. I couldn't be deader. <laughs> was strained through an apple. Uh, are you, um, if you're not a comedian? He, uh, he, he is, is a, a comedian. comedian. Oh, he is He's a comedian. He's proving it here. <laughs> oh, I thought I got a no to comedian. No, I'm the comedian. He's the other comedian. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that man out there, is he a comedian? That's yeah. John. Yeah, that's oh, I thought I got a no. Excuse me. Uh... Does your show emanate from New York? Oh. That's a yes, Mr. Allen? Is it a weekly show? <laughs> Every seven days. I don't mean that as a Next weekly. week, I'm going to get a jug of cider. It'll be easier. Miss Francis? Do you wear a uniform familiar to one and all in it? <laughs> oh, not again. Yes, you darling. <laughs> Is you... Well, let's go just, ahead. Let's keep them on a little while. <laughs> uh, do you ever have anything to do with a banana? The top one. The top one. <laughs> Bless your heart, Bennett, yes. Oh. Hold this voice of mine. All right, do I it. say hello from the street, <laughs> Ned. You... Do it in unison, panel. Phil Silver. Phil Silver, is right. <laughs> Sergeant Bilko of You'll Never Get Rich on this network on Tuesday night. Yes. And this man has got the finest squad you ever saw. We had a Banshee's luncheon this week in New York, which is a kind of get-together of, of uh, journalists and fraternities. And uh, Phil came and brought his squad. And this is the likeliest squad, but the thing that I think gave Phil the biggest kick of all was they were there with the drum and bugle corps and the crack marching team from Fort Monmouth. And they mm -hmm. really looked great we in comparison. knocked them out of the box. Knocked them out of the box. <laughs> this is not. very frustrating. I'm dying to talk, but uh, in the beginning part of my little excellent spot. <laughs> <laughs> These four dear people are very close friends of mine. I was at a party with Bennett only the other night. He says, Could when are you hang? coming on? What's my line? I said, they just don't want me, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Arlene, of course, cooks for me all the time. <laughs> And that chap there, the Gino, old four eyes over there. <laughs> <laughs> we eat a Gino's every other night. It's a little Italian restaurant. I think Fred doesn't particularly care for the food, which is excellent. I just but he has a garlic. hope that Lala Brigida will walk in one night. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Dorothy, need I say more? <laughs> need I yes, say better? Yes, yes. <laughs> but Dick is very understanding. He's been very big about it. <laughs> Well, Phil, I'm Let's sorry. talk about how great my show is. That would be a nice show. <laughs> well, I must say this. I don't I think that many people in our audience need to be told because good heavens knows it made every column and radio critic uh, in the country yeah. that you kind of broke through a ceiling level this past week. I'm very uh, uh, proud would be an inadequate word. I'm, uh, it's a gratifying thing. It's really wonderful. Have we got time? Sure. Yeah. Can I tell you how I 
How I knew we were breaking through, really? Because yes. this is a new world of decimal points, suddenly. I come in Wednesday, nobody says it was a good show. They said you went up three points. You know? <laughs> and so I was walking in a state of shock Wednesday morning, afraid to call in about the uh, Trendex rating. And there was a little girl walking up. I just dawned on me. I'm supposed to tell this story to Ed Morrow. <laughs> Do that I tomorrow. <laughs> you can't leave us hanging up here now. You got All right. Answer. All right. So this little girl, she was walking with Great Dane up the street, up Park Avenue. And uh, it was a frisky kind of a, uh, a puppy, Great Dane. And the dog got the end of the leash in its mouth and was pulling the little girl. And I thought the little girl was about 13, perhaps. You know, it's tough to tell kids' ages these days. About 13 to 15. I don't know. And Fred, I wanted to say that standard joke, uh, who's taking who for a walk, you know? <laughs> but many of my friends have children. I'm kind of devoted to children. I know the instructions home, don't talk to strangers. And I figured this kid this age would not have probably known me. And I didn't want to shock her, so I let the joke pass. But the dog kind of pulled us aside, uh, alongside of each other. And this little girl looked up at me and said, hi, aside. <laughs> well, that pleased me. So, oh, it's got a long time to go yet. So. <laughs> Uh, I said, uh, did you, do you see my show? She says, is your real name Sarge? Are you flirting or giving me instructions? <laughs> okay. uh, I said, that's my name on the show, Sarge. My name is Phil Silver. She says, oh, I've heard that name. She said, I saw you last night. I almost bust laughing. And I said, well, don't control it, dear. Let it come out. This is... But remember, she's a little girl. And so I said, well, you couldn't have heard of me, dear. She says, yes, I do something with bananas. Uh, Top Banana, I said, was a show I was in, and you're too young to know about it. I said, I did another show called High Button Shoes, and I've been in some motion pictures, little girl. And so you would... She says, what is this little girl, bitch? She says, I just come back from Reno. <laughs> He's waiting for me in the car, if that's what you're going to ask. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted to tell Phil that that dog was Lassie. <laughs> What's his ratings these days? Uh, uh, very good for a dog. Well, I'll knock him out, too. <laughs> well, all I can say, Phil, is that actually all of us who've known you for the many years and seen you breast this tide are happy as we can be about it. You've deserved it for a long time, and it's nice to call Well, in this, I'm the wealthiest comedian in show business. I have the nicest friend. Yeah, you've got lots Thank of them, you, too. John Thanks very much. much, Phil. Will you say goodnight to the panel, too, please? And that just goes to prove that anything can happen in television. And by the way, this is a night when we not only have celebrities, as that term is now used in a very broad sense, of course, to cover all kinds of human endeavor. On the stage, we have one off the stage, and it's nice to have him here with us. He's just won a signal political victory. He's been known before in other endeavors besides that of politics, but the governor-elect of the great state of Kentucky, Albert Benjamin Happy Chandler, is here with us in the theater. Happy? Very nice to have you with us. And, uh, panel, I must say that I'm a little disappointed we didn't have the opportunity to throw a very tricky challenger at you, but happily it's somebody who lives in this near area, and we'll be able to do it at another time. Today. Well, this is a night that actually is full of surprises, because I've just gotten one myself, and I don't think we ought to keep it from you much longer, so to be sure that you get your surprise, all I have to say is, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> Good night, John. I'm, I'm wearing my mask as, as a hat because it was made by Lily Dashie. Good night, Fred. Uh, good night. <laughs> good night, what I can see of you, Dorothy. And good night, Arlene. John, I could have guessed uh, Governor Chandler. You didn't give me a chance. <laughs> I know his line. I'm sorry, Miss Dashie. I can't wear it as a beard. Uh, good night, Bennett. I'm wearing my suit because it was made by Arco McNaughton. <laughs> good night, John. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line?